Well guys, we did it. Hey little guy. Oh, okay. I love how he does it. I love watching it. I know. On the camera. Dad. Dad. A hundred and ten percent. Bring your stick. Well guys, we did it. After, oh, just over three years of documenting and, and storytelling and hanging out with some pretty special critters, we got our um, silver play button. I have been sitting on this for a while because I've been waiting for the right time to share it. Part of me was like, is it bragging to share it? And I don't know, over the last few weeks, I'm like, I really want to share this with you guys because you're the reason I got this. This is all because you guys hit subscribe. Sheepishly Me has always been about me as a person, me as someone that is really just trying to find her way, trying to learn how to farm better. Uh, <laughs> me as a mom, me as a friend, me as a wife in an industry that is sometimes uh, misunderstood or just under uh, represented because we're busy. I don't know, YouTube's been a, a way that I've been able to find a piece of me that's been lost for a long time, a creative, a creative outlet and it's been it's been so rewarding it's been really challenging so i guess what i want to do is i want to i want to unbox this with you guys you'll be the first to see it this is because of you so without further ado i have a jackknife i'm shaking Guys. So I got a letter from YouTube. Um, I've seen these videos on YouTube, so if you've seen it um, before, for all the other people that have hit a hundred thousand, the millions of people before me, uh, you've done, you've just done something that very few YouTube creators accomplished. You've uh, you've had an astonishingly astonishing. I can't even read. Hundred thousand people subscribe to your channel. We know that numbers on YouTube can get really big, but we hope that you don't lose sight of the reality behind the six-digit milestone. Each and every person who has subscribed to your channel has been touched by what you created. They were inspired, challenged, or entertained. You achieved this milestone with hard work, perseverance, and probably a healthy sense of humor too. What you've accomplished can't be, can't be taken away from you. And we'd like to recognize you and all your hard work with this Silver Creator Award, a small token of our esteem and respect. We know that you don't do this for rewards. You do it because you have a drive to create and share and because you found an audience who cares. Believe us when we say that we can't wait to see what you do next. A million subscribers may seem like a long way off right now, but you're closer than you think and we're rooting for you. Congratulations, Susan, I don't know. Susan, CEO of YouTube. Oh, wow. Rick 
put my box together. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> That's pretty cool. But here it is, guys. Let me take it out of the box. You guys don't touch. Okay, we'll put you out there. Stop. <laughs> I'm really proud of this. And uh, I owe it all to you guys. Thank you for believing in me and pressing that little red button that says subscribe. Uh, this is this is what we get for that. It's really it's really just a metric. It's not like we get paid for having so many subscribers. There's none of that. It literally is just a measurement tool for us to say, you know, this many people liked this video and subscribe. That video, whatever video it was, made you believe in me enough to want to press a subscribe. And for me, it just means. When you hit subscribe to me, it's like, I'm committing to you. I want to see more. And I just really, really appreciate that because uh, as every creator knows, this part of our life is so personal and so um, challenging because there's not a lot of people we can talk to about it. It's a real different avenue and, and I'm just, I'm just so thankful you guys are all here and witnessed this and I love you all. Thank you for this. Thought I'd come in here, it's a little quieter. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the journey as to how I got here if you're at all interested. Uh, I started YouTube probably back in, I think it was April 2017, so I've been at it a long time and I realized that lots more people start their channels now and just blow up so fast wasn't the case for me. It took me, it took me almost a year to hit my first thousand subscribers. <laughs> Fun fact, Jack, my son, uh, teenager, too cool for me. Anyway, he refused to subscribe unless I hit 999 <laughs> subscribers. So true to his word, he was my thousandth subscriber. Uh, just that's the way our family rolls. We're, we, uh, <laughs> We champion each other, but oh boy, we give each other a good hard time. Yeah, it took maybe maybe eight months for my first thousand, um, but then from there to five thousand took at least another year. So my channel really started growing. I would say March of twenty nineteen, twenty nineteen, March of twenty nineteen. Like it took two years to really, to get to 5,000 subscribers. Right before I hit 5,000, I was so down. I was like, cause I had done, like I'd done a ton of videos and I just threw everything up. I like, I, I just threw every part of my life into it just to see what resonated with people. And I'm like, I was like, maybe I don't have the thing. And then I really wanted to give up. And I remember after that moment of wanting to quit, the channel just finally kind of blew up. Like not blew up, but it definitely went like from 5,000 to 10,000 to 20,000. It just kept going up and up and I'm like, what is going on? And then finally in December, the channel just went crazy when I decided to daily vlog my lambing for Christmas. I love doing vlogmas. It's kind of the thing I really look forward to. I'm usually in the barn lambing and uh, it's just an easy way to connect with you guys because um, it's just a nice ramp up to Christmas. And that's when the channel kind of finally really blew up and I wasn't prepared for it at all. And January 8th, I hit 100,000 subscribers and I remember it was also the, the last day of a very long lambing group that you guys that you guys found me on, really. The most part of my, ch the, the majority of my channel found me in December in that lambing group. And to be able to share that milestone on the very last day of lambing, it was just like, okay. It was like the universe is telling me, finally, you did it. Like, you finally did it. And uh, oh, I'm so emotional about it. Anyways, uh, so 
for all of you that were with me that day that I hit 100,000 subscribers, thank you. Um, but yeah, and then it took a couple months for me to get this award just because I didn't realize you're supposed to actually email YouTube for the I just thought they'd be like, oh, I'm on their list now. They'll just mail me the, uh, the, <laughs> the YouTube uh, silver play button. That wasn't the case. So that's been the journey into this. There has been so many wonderful moments, like videos that I was not going to put out and that I ended up just putting out and closing my eyes and they ended up being some of my best videos. There's been also some things that I've been so happy I journaled. If you go back to my really, really old videos, the first year my, my really good friend Amy um, helped me with this, she championed me, she said just keep doing it, keep doing it, and, I, and uh, as part of that we did what was called Truck Truths. So we would meet about once a month in a parking lot of a restaurant. We'd usually go have lunch and then go to the truck and just talk about whatever was on our mind with in regards to being a mom, to being married to a farmer, to being a farmer, and just friendships and pressures. And it was, for me, it was therapy a little bit. And, and it was so fun and funny. And they were the best ones to edit because it was just lighthearted. Uh, so I'm, I'm really glad I documented all that because um, we're almost at the two year mark of where I actually lost her. And uh, this time of year, this is why I want to do this video now because um, as a tribute to her and that the fact that I never gave up and I think she'd be very proud of that. So yeah, so it's been almost two years and if I didn't have that footage that I could look at and remember her and laugh with still, I still laugh at them. Uh, yeah, it would, it would be gone and it would just be in my memory. So it's nice to be able to have that to, to watch. So I'm very thankful for that. Um, it's all these little things, all these little moments that you're like, I was really meant to do this. <laughs> Cause a lot can happen in two or three years. Um, I've been able to watch my kids grow up. Uh, I've been able to, um, I've been able to watch Harvest and how every year is different and how every year kind of is the same. I've been able to watch lambing after lambing and see that I've improved, which, uh, um, for me, I'm, I'm so competitive with myself, but I'm also very sensitive to what my, what I think my peers are saying or thinking about me. So, um, even just for my own self-esteem it's nice to see that I've improved and I have witnesses to, to see that I've improved I also have a lot of critics that say that I suck at sheep farming which I, I'm the first to admit it and that's why I'm taking you guys for the journey because I want you to see that if you don't give up and you plan and you schedule and you like just put 150 percent of your effort into something you'll make little baby step improvements and those baby steps eventually will be huge and, and that's why I'm sharing my life with you guys, is it doesn't matter what career you're in, we're never good off the bat. Whether it's YouTubing, whether it's sheep farming, whether it's being a parent, whether it's being a wife, whether it's being a buggy driver, you're never good your first day, you're never good probably your first year. You're probably not even that good the second year. But if you keep at it and you get, and you just keep practicing, it gets easier and you get better and you improve and you find you find the things that you need to improve on so i thank youtube for being the outlet that i've needed um it's just i feel like i feel like uh it just came at the exact right time of my life um and i'm just i'm so grateful you guys have been here for the journey um I've got over, yeah, there's like over 300 videos I've done. It's kind of insane. Oh, okay. You're gonna hold it like that the whole time? Yep, right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold it. We are in the grain buggy. Jess is driving. This is her second year at Wheat Harvest. Yep. Wheat Harvest is all I've done. <laughs> That's the, all she does. Well, you were in school, so it doesn't yeah. count. But this year, she, Jess is working full time for us, starting now but we'll get into that because right now starting now because <laughs> right now uh i thought i'd jump into i'm on wagon duty jess just had her 18th birthday and i thought i threw i threw it out on instagram to ask her any question her or me 
and you guys there's Went a lot crazy there's a lot of questions so we are opening up a field right now of wheat so we have lots of time to kill and for any farmers out there you understand that opening a wheat field a soybean field when you're the buggy driver takes forever which I means like it. The wagon driver, it also takes forever. It takes even longer for you. Yes. Uh, team corn. Anyways, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna ask Jess the questions that you guys had, and uh, and we'll go from there. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. There's Let's some go. good ones. Okay. Jess, will you still be doing university with the U of G? P.S. That city is amazing. I'm pretty sure she lives in that city, this girl. <laughs> so what's yeah. your, what is your plan? Because everybody so, wants to know what is the plan. plan. Uh, so originally I was going to go to Guelph for fall 2020, yeah, 2020, uh, but with COVID and everything I decided to defer my offer because I'm not really going for online classes, I don't want, I just don't want to do online class, I did it all throughout high school and, like I can do it, I just, I'm not going to university, you want the just the education, you want the I'm atmosphere, for, yeah, I want to live on campus and I want to meet people. She wants a dorm. A party. It's been a dream since she was little like, to have a dorm. Honestly, I've and go shopping for her dorm. This has been in the making. I'm pretty sure anyone, any 2020 grad right now is probably relating. Just be careful because it'll roll. I'm going to Guelph. I'm just going to wait a year. If they accept you next year. My yeah. glasses. I have to wait for them to accept my deferral. But once they do that, which they will. Hopefully. <laughs> okay, mine. After 18 years, is Jess still your baby? She is. She's just a very big tall baby. <laughs> tall baby. She towers over me. Oh, this one, Flyboy Toy. How many steps do you walk in a day? <laughs> so I walk the most steps in the family, just throwing that out there. We got Fitbits. Um, We're if challenging. I'm doing chores, like if I work on the dairy farm that I work on, I get about between 28 and 30,000 steps, which is a lot, I know. And then if I'm just home for that, like if I don't have chores, I get typically around like 10 to 15,000. And I would say- I get a lot from chores. I would say when I'm not lambing, I would, I like to get 10,000 in. Uh, a lot of my jobs, people think I'm walking all the time. Uh, and a lot of my jobs are on like the tractor and the feed cart, so that helps with the steps. Uh, but I do, f I feel my best when I'm 15 to 20,000 steps, to be honest. I like to stay active. And with mine, if I have a full day of steps, my body is like about to shut down. We sleep better. Would you like to live close to home after college? I think well, that's kind of a loaded okay. question. After school, I don't really know. Like, it just depends on what I do for work. Like, if I work at home, then obviously I'll come home. But if I like get a different job, then I'll have to go wherever the job is. But after school, I want to travel, like for at least a year, and just work while I travel. Like, what if you get a job right after school? Oh, well, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll answer this one. Is it fun to work together as mother and daughter? Um, I don't work with <laughs> Jess very much, but it is fun when I get her. Uh, she helps me. Hay. She helps me out in a pinch. Yeah, she does help with hay. You do help me when Chris is not around, which. Uh, I do try to give Carissa hours because uh, that's the only way she's going to learn is to teach her and, and Jess doesn't it like it. Jess loves farming with her dad. She likes the occupation of grain farming. I don't know necessarily. You probably work better with dad anyway. I'm a bit of a spaz. You two are, I'm, I work good with both of you guys. Just, she does. She's like easy going, which helps. What is your best memory of just the two of us? Just the two of us. Mm -hmm. I'd like to know this too. I don't feel like I did anything too memorable. I feel like we've done lots of things and I just can't think of any. We went to Niagara for just the two of us for yeah. going shopping. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun, yeah. I like, we in always Boxing do, Day week. Yeah, we'll do random things like that mm -hmm. very spontaneously and I like that. And we went to Ikea too that night. Right, right. That was a good long day. Was, yeah. And we met Dad and Jack. In Guelph. And right. Yeah. right, that was fun. That was a good time. Good times. Is Jess gonna still make YouTube videos when she goes to college? Jess has a YouTube channel yes. now, so I you get her perspective. Made my channel for call, like I wanted it for school, and then school isn't. And happening. now school's not happening, so I <laughs> guess we're doing something <laughs> else now. <laughs> but do you think but yeah, you will? Well, yeah, I hope so. 
I want it for my memories, like, because it's fun watching back on. If you didn't know, I used to make videos all the time when I was younger, so I like watching back on them, and I want them. For so school. for journaling. Yeah. What is your favorite thing about being a mommy? Yeah, mom. Having me, duh. Having kids that are respectful and respectful of others. Even the only even reason why we are though, this is for all the parents out there. It's not very respectful. It's because sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Because you guys are respectful to us. We'll treat you the way you treat us. Right. If parents treat their kids badly, then the kids are going to treat their parents badly. Right. It's a full circle. But yeah, I, I do appreciate when they're confident in themselves to carry a conversation with another adult. Uh, even when they were little, we just, they were always a part of our conversation. We never banned them to another room. They were always sitting at the kitchen table with our friends until they got bored. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we were kids, so. At, or when they got sick of getting beer out of the fridge for us, because we 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 are those parents. I know we don't seem it, but we are. Swear every time it comes after me, I feel like it's gonna hit me. A little too close. Yep. I love how he does it. I love watching it. I know on the camera. <laughs> in a video with Mark while looking at corn, she mentioned that she was five foot ten. Is she really that tall? I am at she, least five foot ten. I'm five eight, and she towers over me. I am tall. I have huge legs. I have huge <laughs> legs. <laughs> you have huge. stems. They're huge, man. Oh, this one's funny. Who is bossier, Jess or Sandy? I hate to interrupt, but can you unload that? And uh, Sandy, can you take that and unload it and give me a moisture? Yes. Who's bossier? Dad. Dad. A hundred and ten percent. 